and we'll start off with uh, this piece you have today. Uh, Blinken saying we need to pass this massive infrastructure bill in order to uh, compete with China. And so it's not even a matter of, you know, we have to improve the U.S. economy, but we're going to fall behind and start to lose if we don't uh, pass this bill. So uh, tell us what, uh, what, you know, what you know about the bill and then, you know, Blinken's statement. But yeah, this was a speech that Blinken gave yesterday um, at the University of Maryland, and he was talking. He didn't, you know, uh, mention the the bill by name, but he was saying how the U.S. needs to invest in infrastructure or domestic uh, renewal was how he put it to compete with China and other countries. Um, and this is kind of a common theme of the administration. Biden has said this before. You know, his original infrastructure plan was about 2.3 trillion which is just an insane amount of money. And, uh, you know, he said we needed to compete with China and we're in a competition with China to win the 21st century. This is just like, these are the talking points coming out of the administration. It was kind of more of the same from Blinken yesterday. And then actually this morning, the Senate voted on the infrastructure bill. It's $1.2 trillion altogether. Um, and it's a massive piece of legislation. I'm not totally familiar with it, but I know it includes $550 billion for, you know, infrastructure stuff, transportation, rail, utilities, and stuff like that. Um, and then the Democrats, they also have a plan for a $3.5 trillion budget that would allow them to spend on all sorts of social uh, welfare stuff, um, paid leave and child care, and like just all stuff like that. Um, so I'm not sure. I don't think that that's going to get very far I, I, they just need one or two democrats to be against the plan but uh but yeah it's just it's kind of interesting to see how the biden administration is framing everything in like the lens of you know we we need this to compete with china um and blinken was saying uh you know this infrastructure investment is the best way to advance our foreign policy um he said the chinese and the russians that they're spreading these ideas that the U.S. is in decline and, um, you know, spending, uh, getting the government to spend a bunch of money on our infrastructure is what they think the uh, the solution to, to that is. And they, they put it in this framework that it's, uh, Biden has used this term before. He, he framed it as it's a competition between democracy and autocracy. Uh, so Blinken used a different phrase. He, he used authoritarian uh, government to describe, you know, China and Russia and where the, you know, shining light of democracy here in the U S. Uh, so yeah, it's just, uh, interesting to see how everything is put in this framework. Yeah. Well, it, I, I guess one of the real problems here, Dave, right, is that they're doing this on the infrastructure bill. And maybe it's just politics, right? Like maybe the Democrats think if they frame it this way, they could bully the Republicans into supporting it because uh, the Republicans are constantly on the Democrats for not wanting to be hawkish enough on China. You know, they want to spend more on the military and all the. And even though I don't think that's true or a reality, that is like the, the fictional uh, fantasy land that U.S. politics takes place in is that you know the parties accuse each other of not being hawkish enough on china and so this is now going to end up getting into the mainstream where they're just going to report things dave like you know the republicans are wanting to be soft on uh china right now at a time where you know you're writing up things and they'll mention this like there's concern over uh china's nuclear arsenal or, you know, China's uh, expanding, you know, potential to take Taiwan or uh, in the South China, China Sea, they talk about all this aggression. And so I was wondering if you could update us on some of the things going on, uh, you know, more dealing with foreign policy uh, here, like, you know, Blinken saying we have deep concern over China's nuclear arsenal. But I thought that nuclear arsenal was only about 300 newts, which is uh, uh, you know, fewer combined number of newts than U.S. European allies, uh, the U.K. and France have. So, uh, why why are we deeply concerned about China's nuclear arsenal? Well, yeah. So the estimates put China's nuclear arsenal at about 350 warheads, which is nothing compared to what the U.S. and Russia have, which they each have about 6,000, give or take a few hundred. Um, but I mean, really, the the, the reason why that uh, Blinken is concerned with China's nuclear arsenal 
Um, a big part of the reason it's being hyped up in the media is because the United States, you know, they need a enemy to justify all this military spending and China is, um, you know, the global boogeyman now. And um, the, there's a plan, uh, the military has a plan worth over $1 trillion. I believe it could go up to $1.5 trillion to modernize each triad of the nuclear arsenal, um, ICBMs and uh, uh, land based missiles and everything. Um, and we've also seen these reports about China building missile silos in, in rural parts of, of China. Uh, and, you know, these are just based on these satellite images, um, with what look like holes in the ground. And then these experts say, oh, this is proof that China is massively expanding its nuclear arsenal. And there's reason to question these reports. Um, one of them that was in the Washington Post, it said, uh, it was a it was a wind farm um, nearby where the, the satellite image was taken. It was even on the picture in the Washington Post that it was a wind farm, and some Chinese media outlets dismissed this and said, you know, the picture was of like the the foundation for more um, windmills. Um, but interestingly, the Chinese government hasn't uh, really commented on it. I think they want us to believe that they have more of a nuclear deterrent or that they are expanding their nuclear arsenal because they are, um, the U.S. is surrounding them and stepping up military activity in Asia. Um, so they know how our media is going to kind of jump on all this stuff and exaggerate it uh, and how the U.S. is 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 going to use it. Um, so, well, yeah, I, I mean... It, could that be part of it too, Dave? Even if you know they are building silos, couldn't they just be empty? And I, I mean, the U U.S. does have a nuclear policy called a nuclear sponge, where we have all these missile silos for the uh, ground-based, you know, Minutemen missiles. Uh, that you know, our idea is that if nuclear war should break out, they would have to like target those rather than targeting cities with some of their nuclear warheads, right? So couldn't China be making some kind of similar strategic calculation? I believe. You know, as the U.S. actually scaled down its number of nuclear weapons since the Cold War, some of the missile silos remain. And so the U.S. has empty missile silos, like, laying around out there that I'm sure, you know, there's some ambiguity as far as which ones have the nudes in them and which ones don't. And, uh, you know, maybe China's playing some of the same game or... But anyways, it seems like the hots in the U.S. are certainly kind of feeding the narrative that works well uh, for the Chinese Communist Party. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a good point. That's the other possibility is that they do want it to, uh, you know, to be a place where if a nuclear war did start, the U.S. would, you know, attack these empty missile silos or some of them could be real or whatnot. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, the thing that the United States and Russia should do if, if they want China and other countries, France and the UK, to be involved in nuclear arms control talks like they say they do, is, you know, you dismantle a good amount of their arsenal. Um, so until I do that, China's not going to have any interest in participating in arms control talks. Um, so, you know, all this hype and, uh, you know, all these words that they have for China about them, uh, you know, uh, massively expanding their arsenal which we don't even know if that's true even if, if the hawks prediction is right then they'll double their arsenal over the next 10 years which would still be not nowhere close to what the u.s and russia have but on the other hand you know you just need a couple nuclear warheads to end the world or destroy a couple american cities so it is still a threat i don't want to act like a small a few hundred nukes isn't a dangerous thing it, it definitely is but you know for what the u.s should do is dismantle its arsenal and enter talks with China, but that's not going to happen. That's not uh, the purpose of all this. The purpose of all this is to inflate the threat of China, justify more military spending and expansion in Asia.